with us here, and we're joined now on the phone by the head coach for the Jefferson Cougars baseball team, head coach John Lowry Sr. How are you doing today, Coach Lowry? I'm doing well, thank you. A nice day for baseball today as you have your EPAC opener here in Martinsburg. You're face the Bulldogs, uh, but your team already won to know on the season. You got a 3-2 victory over Frankfurt last week. Uh, what's the different? What, what are we going to see from your team this year compared to past teams? Well, you know, it's the nature of uh, what we do as high school uh, coaches. You, you know, you have guys that move on, seniors that graduate, and you hopefully have guys that are ready to step up and fill in and play. And, uh, you know, uh, it's their opportunity uh, to play those those guys that are stepping up. And that's, uh, we think we're we're fortunate to have some people with, with ability to do that. We had a good game the other day, three to two. Uh, we pitched well. We we didn't have any errors in the field. Um, you know, swinging the bats. I think that's something that, that as the season goes on, we'll um, get better at. But um, you know, if if you had if there's three elements to the game: offense, defense, and pitching. Uh, of course, I guess you could add base running to that. Uh, I think too that you you definitely want to be consistent with would be pitching and defense. And I think. Uh, I, th- I think that we can be that way, and and uh, hopefully the uh, yeah the other facets of the games will get stronger as our season moves on. Coach, there have been some guys that have stepped up uh, after losing such a big senior class from last year. I'm, I'm sorry, I, I didn't hear quite what you said. I, you kind of after uh, losing such a big class from last year, who have been some guys that have stepped up? Well, you know we've. Um, Ryan Hefner, he, uh, you know, he caught for us last year, but he was playing out of position uh, to do that to, to help us behind the plate. Well, he's certainly uh, filled the void for us at, uh, at shortstop. To, you know, Kellen Kinsler left, and at third base, JJ Pavanelli stepping in. Of course, he's got some um, shoes to fill with Finn Horowitz. Finn being a uh, versatile player, not only as a as a defender and sw- swung the bat for us, but he also, you know, uh, was a pitcher of the year in the state and had eight saves for us. So he, certainly, he was a uh, uh, you know a, a, a young man. We had to find somebody to hopefully uh, be able to do what he did. Uh, the right, uh, right side of our infield returns. Well, I guess we don't return our first baseman, but we do return a person with experience at first base in in Riley Morgan and. Um, J.J. Pavanelli, who will play third in place of Finn, uh, you know, he, they can, he can play first base as well. And our, our starting second baseman from last year, Josh Cienfuegas, is back. So uh, we had a transfer student move in. I think it's going to be a, uh, an impact player for us, uh, Caleb Flesher. Uh, he's a sophomore this year. He, he can get behind the play. He can take his turn on the mound, and he swings the bat. Uh, well for us also um, in the outfield you know ready to step in replacing Sam, Sam Wadnitz in center field will be um, uh, Cole Lewis uh, Cole uh, he he swings the bat and he can he can run it down in the outfield da- Daquan Scheip, uh pit pitching and uh, in the outfield when he doesn't pitch uh, Landon Babington the senior is up from our JV team um, sophomore Sam Hefner uh, Ty Duncan, Ty Vickers, you know, the, the list of names goes on of guys that uh, we feel uh, uh, have the ability to play and give us depth and give us flexibility. So, um, you know, it's just a matter of getting all those things sorted out. And hopefully we can, uh, you know, as we play our first stuff, couple of games, you know, guys will start to establish himself and roles will be established. And, uh, you know, we can uh, move on and, and have a um, have a good season. Tonight, your team gets to come to Martinsburg to take on the Bulldogs. What are you looking forward to in the game, and what's your team need to do to get the win? Well, anytime you know you play Martinsburg, it's a uh, it's, it's it's a uh, it's a, a heated type contest. Heated might not be the right word. It's a an intense type contest would probably be better. You know, two schools are rivals. Uh, looking forward to playing on Martinsburg's new uh, new field. I uh, haven't driven by and seen it. It certainly looks really nice and they've done a great job with that so uh you know martinsburg uh i know you know returned some players of note uh that uh they they're always competitive uh baseball is always a uh, a stronghold for martinsburg high school and and it'll be a good test and challenge for us uh we look for a game where um you know pitching and defense i think can again help determine martinsburg obviously can swing the bats a little bit. They put 18 runs up on Frankfurt last night. We only put three. So uh, you can see the challenge that we face in that regard. 
but we're looking forward to it. You know, we've only got to play once. Some of the other teams have played several times, and you know, we want to get into that stretch where we get to play uh, back to back to back and play uh, multiple games per week. And, and uh, you know, in a six week season when you're playing 32 games, uh, you know, hopefully the weather will cooperate and. Uh, you know, our schedule's established, and hopefully we can start getting those games in on a regular basis. And, Coach, you talk about your schedule. Uh, what are some highlights this year? I mean, going back to uh, Myrtle Beach once again, as you guys always do, uh, looks like you're playing a Morgantown team that will challenge you in AAA. Well, you know, we go to down to Myrtle Beach. For the first game, we play a team out of New York, McClancy, New York. Uh, then we play a local team, Waccamaw, who we've played in the past, and then High Point uh, uh, Academy out of High Point, North Carolina, which is um, one of the upper-level schools in, in the state of North Carolina. In fact, in looking at their record, they've already played six games, and they were 6-0. and oh. So, And then we played the Highland School out of Warrington, Virginia. Again, they came to play us last year at our opener. We're going down there later in the season. We have that... Uh, the weekend um, trip in which we go down to Greenbrier. We're going to play uh, Spring Valley as well as uh, Greenbrier twice. And then we have um, a four-game uh, trip out to the middle part of the state. Well, I guess two games in the middle part of the state, but on our way out, we're going to stop in Cumberland and play two against Southern Garrett and Pendleton. And the next day, we'll face uh, uh, Bridgeport and Woodrow Wilson um, out of Beckley, and uh, certainly formidable opponents. So um, you know, you add those games to our EPAC game plus Frankfurt, uh, plus a, a couple of the other schools that we play uh, locally. Uh, I think we have a uh, uh, a challenging schedule, but I do think the strength of our team, one of the strengths of our team, would be our depth of pitching. So uh, it's always fun to try to uh, manage the pitching and uh, get the matchups that you want, so that you, on a particular day, you have the you know the opportunity to win. But the key is is to get yourself prepared for the end of the season and tournament play. And I, I certainly think that our, our schedule um, will, will do that for us. Coach, you mentioned uh, your pitching depth. And uh, you do lose you know, quite a few pitchers from last year, Sammy Roberts, uh, Griffin Horowitz, to do be, to be the uh, two big names that you lose there. Uh, but you return Daquan Shipe along with some guys like Riley Morgan that got a few innings here and there. So... Uh, what's your thoughts on, on the staff, and uh, how do you kind of get the best out of those guys this year? Well, Ryan Hefner is going to take his, his turn on the mound. He certainly, uh, you know, he's got the arm strength, uh, and, and he, he's shown in pregame as well as the one scrimmage we were able to get in that he ha- he has uh, the ability to do that. You mentioned Daquan as being back. You know, Riley last year struck out 45 in 24 innings. And he's gotten bigger and stronger, and, and he's left-handed. Um, I think, uh, without going into too much detail, people are going to uh, find that you know Caleb Fletcher was a. Uh, uh, it's going to be a significant addition to our program. Um, you know, he he, he can throw, and um, he's uh, he just going to be um, a guy who's going to be he's going to be a real plus for us. Um, then you got Cole Lewis, you got uh, Ryan Kelly, you got uh, Ty Duncan, um, you know, and so a couple of the freshmen through the other day in the JV games. And, you know, and in certain situations, both those guys, uh, uh, Alex um, Banner and um, Jet Gross, uh, both showed the ability to, um, you know, mid 70s, 76, 77, and throw the ball across at the knees. So, you know, they're going to be able to get some guys up. But the key, the key is, is that the guys we put out there, we want them to throw strikes, and we don't want to give the free bases up. You know, if teams beat you by swinging the bat and hitting the ball, well, that, that's, uh, you know, you can live with that. But we don't want to, uh, we want to put guys out there that can, you know, if you keep the ball across the plate and, and give us a chance in the field to, to, to get the outs uh, when the opportunity presents itself and stay away from, you know, the free 90 feet, so to speak, where you, you just, you know, you just give them the 90 feet. We want to make them in it. That's our, the key and our approach, uh, you know. This year is, it's been, I guess, every year you could say. And Coach, you talk about your pitching staff. Who do you have going tonight for you against a, a big EPAC team well, game? Uh, Raleigh Morgan will start tonight. All right. 
So, Coach, my question goes back to your team's schedule. Uh, you mentioned earlier that it's a lot of teams that you played last year that came to you guys, so now you get to go there. So it's created a very lopsided schedule when it comes to the amount of away games this year compared to home games. So how do you just make sure your team can adapt to that this year? Well, I mean, last year we were fortunate to play them at home. Like you say, it just turned out. But, you know, you, you, you look about them, you look at them as being home and away, but and a number of games, I can think of six games right now, they're, they're uh, played on neutral sites. Actually, yeah, uh, six or seven of them are on neutral sites. So, you know, that's a little different than saying that you're playing away. I know you're not playing on your field, but the other team's not playing on their field either. So, uh, but, uh you know, that's just the way it happens to work out this year. Obviously, the EPAC games split up to where we're, you know, we, every year we're going to have the same number home and away. But, um, you know, a couple of the teams uh, were in here last year for the weekend double hitters on Saturday. And it's, you know, it's our turn to go their way this year. And that's just, just the way it worked out. And um, really, in, in a way, that's another way of challenging your team. You're on the road. And, you know, a lot of times it'll come down. You'll have to get those three outs in the bottom of the seventh to uh, hopefully maintain a lead. And, um, you know, it's good to learn to play uh, play that way, too. Coach, when you look at the uh, <clears throat> EPAC this year, um, in the past you and Martinsburg have really been the top two programs. But uh, this year, just based on, you know, knowing – about the players returning, you have Musselman and Hedgesville who return a lot. Spring Mills returns quite a bit as well. So, uh, are you expecting this year to be uh, super competitive? I mean, obviously it always is. Washington's going to have a good team as well this year, but uh, maybe compared to years past, this might be one of the more competitive seasons we see in the EPAC. Well, you look around. I mean, you can you can look at the different teams. You know, the uh, Musselman features uh, you know multiple. Uh, strong arm pitchers and you know pitching is and um, it, at this level is, is really significant to keeping you in games. Uh, Martinsburg uh, returns the uh, uh, Boober kid and they uh, and they have some some arms around him. Plus they have uh, the Candy kid in center field and some other kids that can really run. Uh, you know they'll always, uh, as you said, they'll, they'll always be competitive. I understand Spring Mills had a pitcher move in from. Uh, Williamsport that uh, pitched a strong game for them in their opener and with the players that they have returning with the addition of an arm like that it uh, you know it certainly uh, brings strength to their program and you can look out at Hedgesville and see the the Lauder kid uh, the Ruiz kid and uh, some of the other kids that they have returning um, you know the, the, you're right I think it's going to be a, a very interesting and competitive league uh, with each game being meaningful and then the implications beyond that will be for the seeding for when it comes for the uh, you know the section on the regionals because uh, uh, you know those are the six teams of course Hampshire comes into our section, but they're not in the EPAC. But those six teams, you know, the, not only do we play in the EPAC, but we basically play against each other coming sectional and, um, um, you know, regional tournament times. Washington, uh, you know, you've seen what they've done. They've scored 23 runs the first game. They scored 22, I think, uh, the other day up at Hampshire. So obviously they can swing the bat. They have the Reed kid who's as good as any player in the area. Uh, and they, uh, the Moore kid swings the bat for them. And, uh, you know, the, from top to bottom, you know, they're, uh, you got to get them out. They're not going to get themselves out. So, uh, that's what makes it fun. It's going to be competitive. Each game is going to be meaningful. And, uh, you know, uh, teams, I uh, think, need to value, uh, being ready to play, you know, not just going out and going through the motions, but being ready to compete every night when they step out there. Coach John Lowry, Sr., our guest. Thanks for the time, Coach Lowry, and we'll see you here in a few hours. Okay. Appreciate you having me on. I was head coach for the Jefferson Cougars baseball program, the legendary John Lowry, Sr.